Good morning and welcome in this third week of Lent. As we think about and praise God for the wonderful living water that Jesus offers to us and also are challenged to share that living water with others. The Lord be with you. And also with you. dry wilderness of our lives, in the days of heat and thirst, you offer us living water. Thank you, gracious and generous God. When circumstances or the inhumanity of others have left us alone and wounded, you offer us living water. Thank you, gracious and generous God. We thank you and praise you, O God, that however we may thirst, whatever we may need to satisfy our souls, you offer it freely and abundantly in Christ. So we drink deep of the living water, and as we draw from your wells, we seek to pass the cup to others who, like us, are thirsty for your grace. We pray together the collect for the third Sunday in Lent. Gracious Father, Your Son is the source of living water. Grant that the gift of His Spirit may be to us a spring of water welling up to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Listen to the good news this morning, as written in the Gospel of John, selected verses from chapter 4. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Jesus had to go through Samaria, and eventually came to the Samaritan village of Sachar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Soon, a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please, give me a drink. He was alone at the time, because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, You are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, If you only knew the gift God has for you, and who you were speaking to, you would ask me, and I would give you living water. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and 
This well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Oh, please, sir, the woman said, give me this water, then I'll never be thirsty again and I won't have to come here to get water. Go and get your husband, Jesus told her. I don't have a husband, the woman replied. Jesus said, you're right. You don't have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. Sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. So tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship, while we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount Gerizim, where our ancestors worshipped? Jesus replied, believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. But the time is coming. Indeed, it's here now when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him this way. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. The woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village telling everyone, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? Many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, he told me everything I did. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, from this very familiar story. What do you see? 
If we look at her from our own perspective, from a 21st century perspective, we might see her as a woman something like Elizabeth Taylor. Do you remember her? She had seven husbands and she had seven divorces and she was also widowed once. So she was the kind of woman perhaps who couldn't commit to a man and as soon as he became not good enough for her, she would discard him, divorce him and find another one. And some people, in fact many people in the church, have looked upon this Samaritan woman as an immoral woman. But if we look back, forgetting our present circumstances, where divorce is something that a woman can do, or a man can do, and we go back into the days of Jesus, things were very different then. A woman was under the protection and under the rule of her father until it was time for her to marry. And usually very young, 14 or so years old, her father would contract a marriage for her with a suitable man and then she would pass from the protection and the rule of her father to the protection and rule of her husband. Now, if she did not please her husband, he could write a decree of divorce and divorce her. But she had no such right. As a woman, she could not enter into any kind of contract on her own. So it was always done between the men and the families. So if you look at it from that perspective, this woman who had been married five times could not have divorced those men. She had either been divorced by them or perhaps she had been widowed because marrying at the age of 14, she might have married someone quite a bit older than herself. And the life expectancy for men at that time was 39. So even if she had married, say, a 25-year-old man, he could could easily have died and left her a widow. And then a new marriage settlement would have to be made between her father and another man. Now, a man could be displeased with his his wife for many reasons. Perhaps infidelity, but there's no evidence that that was the case. But another possibility was that she was barren. She may not have been able to bear a child, and the main purpose of marriage at that time for a Jewish man was to have an heir. It was very, very important. So if they were not able to have a child together, he could divorce her, send her back to her father, and find another woman. So when I look at this woman, I see a broken woman. I see a woman who had been rejected, maybe rejected five times, or maybe two or three times by a husband, perhaps widowed once or twice. So she was a broken and hurt and rejected woman. And she was a Samaritan. So she wouldn't have been the kind of woman you would expect Jesus to be talking to. Hence her surprise. In fact, Jesus' behavior was quite outrageous. A Jewish man was not supposed to speak to any woman, in fact, that he didn't know. And here was a woman who was a Samaritan as well, and Jews did not speak to Samaritans. And they definitely didn't drink water together. A Jew would never have drunk water out of a receptacle that had been touched by a Samaritan because they considered them to be unclean and they would be made spiritually unclean by contact with that person. 
But it's interesting to see how Jesus treated this woman. He treated her with respect. Yes, he pointed out that he knew about her circumstances, and that could only be the prophecy that was given to him by the Holy Spirit, that he knew anything about her life. But he only commented on it briefly and then left it. He didn't say to her, go and sin no more or repent or anything like that. Because she was actually asking him spiritual questions, which was also a strange thing. Because women at that time were not educated. Their main purpose was to be the homemakers and the carers of the children. So they were not trained in the law and taught all about Torah. But she had an inquiring mind. She wanted to know more. She was asking questions. And Jesus was answering her questions. But in addition to that, he offered her living water. He asked her for a drink, but then he offered her a drink that would make all the difference to her broken life. Jesus' offer was this. The water that I will give will become a spring of water bubbling up to eternal life. And that's what happened, actually. Because you see the conversation that they have with each other about worship and the deep things of God. And once she had received this from Jesus, she actually began to bubble. You can see, even in the text, the change in her. She rushed back to the town and began to tell everyone about what she had discovered in Jesus. My own experience with this text goes back a few years when I was ministering in Joburg. And clergy are encouraged in every diocese to go on a two or three day retreat every year, at least one, to be quiet and to listen to God. And so on this occasion, I had gone on a three day retreat and was in silence with a number of other people. And the retreat conductor led us to this passage. And he said, put yourself into this passage. In your imagination, imagine that you are there. And I had the most profound experience, spiritual experience, that day. Because as I began the process in prayer and in silence of entering that passage of scripture, I found myself falling to my knees in the dust at Jesus' feet as he sat on the edge of the well. And he took my hand in his. And I can still feel the roughness of his artisan's hand as he held my hand. And I experienced something, I think, of what that Samaritan woman experienced. I experienced the sense that he knew everything. I didn't have to say anything. He knew everything in me, and he loved me. And that was a profound experience because now, for the rest of my life, when I get to a place where things are really difficult, where I'm falling apart or I'm overstressed or I'm anxious or I feel rejected, I go there again, just in my imagination, into that space on my knees in the dust with Jesus and put my hand in his. And I know that he is giving me living water again as I go forward in my life. And I think that I want to continue to be like the Samaritan woman. I want to be the kind of person who has living water bubbling up in me so that I can pass on the message of Jesus to others. And I pray that will be your desire and your experience this Lent as we spend more time 
in prayer before God as we prepare ourselves for Easter. Let's prepare ourselves by asking for more living water, more of the Holy Spirit from Jesus, so that we can share the water. Amen. When shadows fall, when the night covers all, there are things that my eyes cannot see. I'll never fear, for the Savior is near, my Lord abides with me. How can I fear, Jesus is near, He ever Jesus offered living water to the woman at the well, forgiving her and setting her free. Let us, who are also sinners, call to mind our sins in the presence of Jesus. Let us keep silence as we confess our sins. God of living water, you call us to come and drink. So why do we sit here and complain that there is not enough water? You call us to strike the rocks of our world and let your living water flow. But we do not trust enough that the spring is there. You call us to share the water of life with the world around us, but we are tempted to save it for ourselves. We pray together for all the times we turn away from your water, for all the times we sully the water by misusing it, for all the times we let others go thirsty Instead of offering a drink, forgive us, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon our sins and set us free from them, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus, who humbled himself by becoming a homeless, travel-worn, exhausted and eventually despised man, even to the point of death on a cross, in order to save me. Thank you that you searched me out convicting me of sin, of righteousness, of judgment, so that by faith in Christ, I have received your free gift of salvation. As I consider the Samaritan woman at the well, who came to Jesus, heard his message, 
and chose to drink of the living water he offered. It is wonderful to know that no one is excluded from drinking the living water of life that you offer. An offer which becomes a living spring within, welling up into eternal life. A wellspring of water that's been poured into our weary souls. May we drink deeply from the fountain of your supply and resist the temptation to do things as we heard last week, our way and in our strength. God, living water, river of mercy, source of life, in whom we live and move and have our being, who quenches our thirst, washes and cleans and bathes our wounds, refreshes our weariness. Be for us always a fountain of life and for all the world a river of hope springing up in the midst of the deserts of despair. O Spirit of God, mighty river, flow over me, in me, through me. Cleanse me, purify the channels of my life so that your living water may flow out through me to others who are in need of you, your forgiveness. Enable me to be a channel through whom your love and your refreshment may stream out to all those with whom I come in contact so they may know you as the water of their lives. Bear each one of us along with thy flood of life-giving service. Bear us down to the ocean, the ocean of thy eternal love. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy to give you thanks, Holy Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him you have created us in your image. Through him you have freed us from sin and death. Through him you have made us your own people by the gift of the Holy Spirit. And now we give you thanks that you have poured out your Spirit on us as living water bubbling up to eternal life.
us, Father, through Christ your Son, our Lord, and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Therefore, Father, proclaiming his saving death and resurrection and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise and grant that we who eat this bread and drink this cup may be renewed by your spirit and grow into his likeness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom all honour and glory be yours, Father, now and forever. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Brothers and sisters, draw near and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which were given for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. Let's offer ourselves now to God as he has offered himself to us. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Go now from the service of worship to the service of God's people, near and far. Refreshed by the living water that Jesus offers to you, listen for the parched voices of the least of God's children. Search out the dry places and the arid souls, and become for them a spring of living water. And as you go, may the blessing of the God of life, the Christ of love, and the Spirit of grace be upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. As people called to share living water with others, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. Just one.